So uh, we had our meeting with Mark, and uh, we, I, I got some ideas on what to change. I went ahead and made those changes real slight. Uh, you'll see them in these passes here. Um, I went ahead and took out the uh, surface quality of the um, certain areas, like the bracer and the torso uh, piece. Uh, so there's no, there's pretty much little to no bump on those at all now. So it has more of a plastic sort of synthetic look. And I also did sort of a, a repeating pattern in the specular for those pieces so that it has sort of a almost a carbon fiber, uh, kind of a, a different uh, look. And I th really think it's what he was uh, he was going for, and I think he's going to really like it. So um, some changes I didn't get to, but I did most of them. Uh, I did uh, the uh, more reddish hues and the um, buckles and whatnot. You can see... Um, in some of these passes, uh, all the changes. Um, overall, I think I uh, addressed the uh, the major issues, and um, I think it's uh, I think he's going to be pretty happy with it. Um, so what we're going to do on this segment um, is really just uh, put this guy together from what we textured and 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 lit, and uh, really show what this costume is capable of, and it'll be a nice visual cue for the rest of the team when they start to put this guy into the shots um, and uh, they'll have an idea of how it needs to be put together, the colors. Um, we'll explore some of the color space issues that we had with um, with the costume uh, in uh, contrast with the the concept which is uh, some greenish hues and, and, and whatnot but we'll we'll just throw all of that in while we're working on this and um, it should be uh, well uh organized package once uh we get done with it and um helpful for the rest of the team and this is really a fun part too for me and for a lot of people is 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 doing the the nitpicky tweaks and that's what shake is great about is great for um and we could most of us could sit in here for days changing sliders and tweaking things but um we're just going to throw this together as quick as possible and uh, address some of the issues that uh, we discussed. And um, it should be uh, ready to go. So I'm just using the same concepts um, that I did on the head uh, when we put that together. Um, very simple. Um, adding all the diffuse together again and throwing some brightness nodes in between so that we can uh, change the uh, intensity of each of the lights. Um, the lighting on this uh, is um, not that artistic. We'll, we'll get a little. We'll, we'll have a little fun with it in the end here, because um, uh, we have the control to do it here. Uh, Mark wanted to see a little brighter image to to be able to make out everything, and we'll be able to output that uh, anytime we want. We just bring up our ambience and gamma it up, whatever. But for now, we're just going to do a nice, uh, pretty image that really shows off the asset and um, and has a kind of a moody cue uh, for the other shots. And uh, I'll put together uh, something that's a little more revealing for uh, his review process, but um, easily done in, in Shake. So I have some of these lights here that I made, uh, additional lights. You can see them, they're uh, blue and red, and uh, there's some some, tech, some uh, technology on him that uh, seemed to be emitting some light, and uh, it's a little strong in these passes, but um, you'll see that it doesn't come across too strong once we put the color on it. The color tends to mute things a lot, and uh, if we need it to come back in a lot, we'll, um, we'll just uh, brighten it up a bunch. So I'm bringing in the ambient here, and I'm going to dial it way down because it's pretty bright. So I'm just going to be flipping back and forth uh, so that you can see the tree a little better um, and the image. Uh, here's our color. Um, it's looking okay. Uh, there's uh, some contrast uh, changes that I did to the pieces that he wanted to be more synthetic. So basically what I did is uh, I took a, a, a contrast node in Maya and uh, just basically toned down the contrast of the the white worn areas of that leather. And um, so it's more of a constant color. So 
it, it has more of a synthetic look because it doesn't have that natural wear and tear. Um, but some of the other pieces still retain that, uh, which uh, uh, I like and I think is a good complement. So that's what it looks like when it's multiplied. It's pretty pretty dark. Um, but the specular and reflection on this model is really what makes things happen. So we'll hook we'll hook up the specular together. And do the same uh, same mix. Can't see the uh, on this recording. You can't see the uh, drop down menu for the nodes, but I'm just using the basic ones that I was using before, so they're pretty easy to access. It's just the I add. And you can see sort of that pattern in the specular here um, on those pieces that are changed. It's it's kind of a striation um, with a tiny little dots. Uh, it kind of gives it like a, a fiberish look, um, kind of a hexy look that uh, Mark was after. And then there's the red and blue specular um, in there as well. And we'll, we'll probably bring those up uh, to be a little more visible later. So I'm trying to keep organized here. Um, shake networks can get really messy really fast because in, in a sense they are nonlinear. Um, in a lot of ways you can go lateral and, and, and go between different nodes. And um, it just becomes a, a, a web of lines. and so I try to keep it organized as possible. Um, uh, once you get comfortable in Shake, you'll just start throwing nodes down, hooking up, to, hooking them up to random nodes here and there, and the next thing you know, you've got a big, big mess. That it's um, the comp might look good, but it's hard to, to hard to figure out what you did. So this is the same concept with the um, with the reflection. Um, the suit's going to have some decent reflection, I think, because it's it's kind of shiny and it's going to be uh, reflecting the environment a lot, um, to a certain degree. Uh, the the shaders themselves, uh, I put some reflection blur on them, so they're not uh, a literal chrome. You're not going to have uh, really high highlights. You're going to have um, you're going to have high, high highlights, but you're not going to have sharp high highlights. So those uh, are going to uh, end up being very ramped and very blended. So it'll feel like the, the reflection is very um, blurred and uh, uh, very leather-like. And the Nexus uh, has a full uh, reflection, occlusion, uh, blur, uh, all, that, all those capabilities are built into it. So it's merely just uh, setting a slider and uh, you're good to go. Here I'm just uh, multiplying the, uh, the alpha of the ambient, which uh, contains just the occlusion portion. So when you render out a nexus pass, you'll get an ambient, which includes the environment. But in the alpha channel of that same pass, you'll have black and white information of just occlusion. So I just threw that on top to sort of darken down some of the areas that were getting too bright. And um, you can sort of fade that in as you see fit. Here I'm just going to uh, molt the uh, reflection against this um, uh, Fresnel pass. Actually, what I want to do is uh, take the the occlusion and multiply it against that uh, Fresnel pass because I want the reflection to be a little less uh, prominent in all the little corners because then you don't get those little funky highlights um, in areas where uh, there's shadowing because the uh, reflection is not uh, does not have shadows on it and it is additive so that's the difference right there so we'll just take this and multiply it against uh, what we just made And again, it doesn't look like much, but when you add it all together, you start to see the values come through. And when you're working in 16-bit or higher, um, you're not always going to see exactly what it's going to look like because you could have values that are lower or higher than actual uh, actual uh, screen can output. So 
um, when it's combined with other pixels, it looks a little different. So um, it's just something to be aware of when you're working in anything above 8-bit. So I'm going to add the specular to the reflection. And so that's that's going to be my my whole uh, spec pass there with the reflection included and uh, all the different little light hits. And we're just going to add that on top of uh, our base. Just making another eye add and copy this guy and paste it. It's pretty easy um, to do a simple comp like this. You only need uh, probably two or three different kinds of nodes. And once you lay them in, you just um, copy them from where you've already made them. And uh, you don't have to get too crazy with it. So there's the spec on top. I think it's a it's a little harsh. I think it may be revealing too much um, of the forms. I think that uh, it could be tightened a little bit, but we'll just we'll play with it a, a little and see what happens. The um, the other option is to uh, is to uh, darken down the color mat. I'm just gonna take all these mats that I have, and I'll show you those in a little bit. Uh, those mats are just uh, object mats. It, uh, isolate different pieces of the costume. And we'll, uh, Lighter will be generating uh, just a ton of those for the compositor and he'll get into um, the setup for that and it's not very hard but um, I just didn't want to get into it on this on this uh, portion but uh, definitely check out the lighting portion to uh, see how to set all of this up. Right now we're just concerned with the look and, and, and the possibilities that Shake uh, gives us. So right now I'm doing a key mix, which basically allows me to do a um, a color correction to the same layer, um, but it's driven by um, an alpha. So it's basically um, it's basically like if you had in Photoshop, if you had a, a an adjustment layer that had a layer mask assigned to it, same concept, but it's a little more non-linear here. So I'm going to take this mat that has um, just the leather pieces that I made, and uh, the white just represents anything that's a leather material or a synthetic material, and leaves all the other stuff out, like the metals and the straps. I'm going to use that to uh, color correct the color map. So like, if I want to just make the color of the leather a different color, I can use this mask to do so. So, um, Or if I just want to make the color darker, which I'm going to experiment with right here. So I'm taking the brightness down, but as you can see, it's only changing the leather. And I'm going to try gamming it down and crunching it just a little bit. I think my original texture does, doesn't have enough contrast in it. So um, that's just something to think about. And that's something that um, why this process is so good is I've, I've, I've discovered uh, the problems with my with my textures. So um, Later or down the road, I might uh, make note of, of of how dark the texture is and, and or how light the texture is, and make the uh, necessary changes to it so that when the 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 simple version of the comp goes together, it lo it'll look somewhat like um, what I'm tweaking here. So I'm just interactively changing the um, brightness of this uh, and and seeing it in the overall beauty. Um, I'm running a fairly low res uh, of this, um, as I don't think it'll be seen any higher res in, in full body mode. Uh, and I'm mostly just worried about the colors and the way that the specular um, hits off some of these objects where I've, I've made custom specular maps and uh, the bump maps, how they respond to the specular. Um, those are all things that I'm just looking at as I'm changing these things. So I'm just tweaking, tweaking stuff. I think that the overall brightness should go down. So I don't think just the leather should should get darker, but I think everything in the color map should get darker. Um, also, I'm going to use a compress node uh, for my color correction. So I'm using the compress node and then selecting my high color and using that to replace um, the hue of the texture. And there's many ways you could do this in Shake, probably. Um, millions, but um, 
this is the way I usually do it. So it's really dark here, but you can see there's a sort of a greenish hue and it's probably too dark. So I've got um, two brightness nodes on there, so I'm going to have to clean that up at some point. So let's take a look at um, the color of our spec. One um, thing that we uh, talked about with Mark was the fact that the specular kind of has this green hue, hue to it. So I'm taking that same green compressed node that I did to the to color map, and I'm uh, just putting it directly under the spec tree, and um, that's creating uh, or that's making all of the spec turn into sort of a greenish hue. It might be too much. Um, I don't need the red and blue speculars to be that color. Those need to be the color of the um, of the uh, actual lights. So I'm just uh, putting it under just the directional lights, not the area lights. So it's looking pretty green right now. I think it's maybe a little too green, but um, we can kind of see where what's possible with this. Um, how we can manipulate each pass and uh, how that translates into uh, possibly modifying our textures to accommodate these things. So I'm just going to tone down some of this green. This is a really good way to sort of experiment with, with uh, your asset, really, and see um, some maybe directions that, you know, it could take hours, really. I mean, re-rendering and re-rendering and re-rendering and changing shaders and re-rendering, all of that just takes so much time. So, like, to be able to do this and um, change colors on the fly and change uh, gammas and, and basically gamming the specular would allow you to change the eccentricity of it um, with a 16 or higher bit image. So you can, t you can tighten the spec, you can widen the spec, you can change the ambience um, contribution, all that stuff you can just do right on the fly. And uh, no need to spend hours and hours just re-rendering stuff. And the Nexus is uh, really what makes all that possible, that and a, and a solid compositing uh, package, um, like Shake or uh, Nuke, any of those uh, packages will get you here. So I'm thinking I'm going to remove, um, I think I'm just going to remove this. I'm, I'm kind of seeing what what's possible with this uh, color correction, but I think that maybe everything on this color map needs to be changed. And uh, I don't think this mask is really going to cut it for me. So I think I'm just going to get rid of that and um, take everything else out. I'm going to keep my color corrections, but I'm just going to get rid of the mask. So that's right there is what it's going to look like. Um, by pressing uh, I on the keyboard when you uh, have a node selected, it'll automatically ignore that node. But I'm just going to take the output of the compress and go straight into it. So everything's much darker, but I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the dark uh, aspect of this. Maybe because it's just more dramatic. Um, but let's just experiment with this. I've got double darkness, so I'll delete one of those. So it's much, much darker than what the concept is right now. Um, I think that it's right now it's more of a, a moody lighting of that same costume. Like if you, he was in a bright, bright lit room, it would look different. But um, that's just uh, boring to look at, and it's never going to look like that in any of the shots. All the shots are going to be very dynamically lit um, and have a lot of uh, things happening. So I just kind of want to emulate that idea um, so that when uh, Compositor and Lighter look at these images, they, they, they get ideas in their head and, uh, on how like this thing should be lit and um, how it responds to the light and how certain areas uh, break down under certain lighting. So it's always good to know these things. So I'm, I'm I'm having a little fun with the lighting here. I've taken the rim light on the specular and I've just cranked the the hell out of the intensity um, by putting it to like three or four of brightness. And uh, 
now we have this really nice sort of greenish uh, moonlight sort of um, rim on this thing, and uh, it's really going to help. It's really going to help sell this image. So one thing that I missed um, was that I masked out the reflection for all the metal uh, when I did the Fresnel pass. So um, the metal needs to have almost a constant reflection on it because it's so shiny. So I, I have a mat for just the metal pits, uh, the, the metal bits, and um, I'm just going to add that, do an eye add of that alpha onto the Fresnel pass that I did, uh, like that. So now, so now that's that's saying that anywhere there's where there's a value of one, it's going to be a hundred percent reflection. Well, we don't want that much reflection, but we'll tone it down. But that'll basically uh, give us a bunch of reflection uh, in the metal areas. And that's a much more realistic look, but we'll tone it down just a little bit. Uh, one issue that I was having is that Mark wanted uh, the metal to have more of an ana uh, anodized or uh, kind of a, uh, a warmer hue to it. Um, but the problem is, is that as soon as you introduce an environment reflection, which uh, if it's a sky, it's going to have a lot of blues, which I, I used one that has a lot of blues in here. Um, so that's going to start to override that color. So uh, it's very... Um, uh, it's very custom to whatever scene it's going into. So uh, sometimes you need to, to neutralize your uh, HDRI or maybe just desaturate it a little bit. Um, I'm just going to keep the reflection low on those and uh, but keep a little bit of it in there. And um, I think the, the redness is still going to be coming across as uh, he imagined it. And um, if, if not, then our compositor will just uh, go straight in there and crank the saturation. So one thing I like to do on any sort of material, um, be it cloth or leather or anything that might have a lot of small follicles on the on the ridges of or on the on the surface of the material, that's going to be um, creating almost like a, a fuzzy uh, light uh, wrap. And and so what you can do is is bring out the the facing ratio or the Fresnel and um, Give it a uh, really a light light uh, treatment, but add that back into everything. So the Fresnel or the the facing ratio uh, pass, it's then just added on top of everything, and um, you can take it out of certain things that wouldn't have that, um, such as uh, metals and uh, hard plastics, anything that doesn't have any um, uh, microscopic um, follicles on on the on the surface would uh be void of this pass so um we can do a uh an isolation of this uh by uh, doing an inside so i'm adding this here but i want to do an inside uh, and i'm going to use that leather mat that i had that uh, that was uh saying where all the leather is and i'm going to say that um this Fresnel pass, this facing ratio pass, is only going to occur inside that alpha. So that's what an inside does. And it's just an easy way to uh, mask out something. So that's being added um, onto my reflection, which in turn being added onto everything else. So uh, it's a little harsh. So I'll do a brightness on that and bring it down to something really subtle. And I could even give that a color later too, um, so that it's not just a white, but it has a little bit of um, quality to it. So as you can see, it's a pretty subtle pass. It um, kind of doubles as a little bit of a light wrap. Um, and gives some of the surfaces a little bit of um, more depth. Yeah, so I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, color to that fuzz pass. Um, that's another pass that I also do on skin because uh, of the peach fuzz. It's basically a, a hack for peach fuzz. If you do real peach fuzz, you need to do um, 
a real hair system and then render that out as a pass because it needs to actually for for a, a, an accurate look you need to have it protrude the profile of the geometry so the geometry needs to and it actually needs to break that line um, and sort of interrupt it and create sort of a fuzzy edge but uh for um for our purposes just a uh, fresnel um a tweaked fresnel will will suffice so i'm adding some of that red speculator that i had coming from that little gadget on the side of his um arm back in i think it was a little weak so i'm just kind of bringing it back in kind of subtle effect So uh, one thing that I like to do too um, is uh, uh, preview some of the um, glows and things that might happen in comp, but uh, we'll just quickly um, transfer this uh, over to the blue blue pass as well, so that we have uh, a little more of that blue in there. I don't know how it's going to respond. I mean, it might be a little harsh, but uh, there's a glitch in this pass. It seems like the light's almost coming from behind the clip instead of on top of it. So um, it's causing um, a little bit of a funky look, but um, that's just something that uh, was a was an oversight. But in the final, it would definitely have a light on top of that, illuminating um, more of the top surface. And the shoes and knee pads are just sort of coming along at the same rate. I'm doing most of these uh, tweaks globally. Um, yeah, so the glow that I uh, want to do is going to be in this gl the glowy bit section. And that's just um, those little buckles that have these blue sort of R's. And we talked to, or I talked to uh, Mark about this in the meeting, um, about how they... They're glowy, but um, if he needs to, he can turn them off um, before he goes into combat or whatever. So uh, those these actually might be animated, and they can be animated in comp and and complete have complete control in comp. So what I'm doing now is I'm just doing a quick roto shape um, to say where this is going to be brighter. Um, in the final, I'll su I'll be supplying the com the compositor with uh, an actual uh, frame buffer mat. That defines this so that when it animates it it follows correctly but for now i'm just i'm sort of doing a visual development uh hack here and just saying that um this is an idea for how the um the uh blue portion of this can be embellished uh strictly in comp with the aid of a of a mat so i'm just exploring here what what it's going to be um needed to make this work um, I'm just hooking the mask straight into the node, but I think um, what's needed is uh, another key mix. So another pseudo adjustment layer. Um, and I'm going to need to change the saturation as well as the brightness, because I, I want it to be more of a, a neon blue. And uh, uh, the blue that came out in the color is, um, is a little weak, and I might need to fix that uh, before I pass it along. But... If we have a mat that controls that, then um, it won't really be an issue. So there's a readout for that, and then we'll just uh, we'll throw in another one, and just in the little plus add uh, thing, if I can find it. Ah, there it is. Okay, so that's just going to be um, adding another shape to the same node. And we'll just build that. So now we have just a really simple mask that um, is masking the uh, color correction to that. And I'm just doing that to the color pass at the moment. So it's really bright and um, it should come across okay. Uh, still not very, very much, but better than it was before. So um, that's establishing the color um, of these things as being a little brighter. And then what we'll do is we'll just add another layer on top, which is just like a um, a glow layer. 
So if this was Photoshop, you would just be duplicating the layer, blurring it, and then adding it on top. And that's all we're going to do here is just add a blur node. Um, one problem I have here is that the resolution of my roto shape is not the same as my canvas. So um, the resolution is 960 by 1080. So um, find it. So there it is right there. So I need to make my roto shape that same shape or that same uh, resolution. So now I can blur it properly. Zoom into that. So that's just a representation of the of the roto and uh, as an alpha, and I uh, just blurred it. And I'm going to do a compress, and we'll just make this a nice blue, a blue color, nice, uh, pretty highly saturated blue color. And then we're just going to add that all the way to the end of the network. It's going to be just a little bit of a frosting at the end. So that's that's pretty bright, but we can dial it in as, as we see fit. Um, I'm just going to use the percentage on the add node. Um, you can see the difference right here. Uh, I'm just going to use the percentage on the add node to sort of dial in how intense this thing is. But you could definitely animate something like this and it would just sort of fade. Uh, it would turn from on to off. And that's why I think that uh, I would, would in fact not change the color to be brighter, um, but in fact have it all controllable by a mat, um, which could be then animated uh, on, off, whatever. And um, there would be no uh, conflicts with the color texture. So it's looking pretty close to what I want, um, at least for this visual development stage. I think that I've learned some stuff about the color map, uh, what it's lacking. Um, I've learned some stuff about um, the way that the uh, speculator is responding and its color. Um, and um, I think it's it's a really good process to do for, for any asset that you do. Because you can you can figure this all this stuff out without uh, wasting a lot of, of your time and and it's very artistic too because um, it's all visual and uh, a lot of us are very visual and um, you need to see a response and not um, tweak a, sl a slider and then wait uh, two minutes and then render again and then you know so it's 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 a good um, it's a really good process for uh, for the artistically um, driven, and 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 when you figure out just the basics of Shake or any compositing program, which are quite simple, um, you're gonna really uh, you're really gonna love it, and you're gonna start to move forward fast, and you won't be able to stop tweaking your images. So I'm still tweaking this color map because I'm still kind of curious on where it's going. Um, I like the greens that, that have occurred and the blues from the environment really complement the greens. Um, so that's really good to know. So when he jumps out of the helicopter, if there's like a blue uh, hue to the sky, then you're going to have a really nice play on the colors of the sort of the synthetic green um, futuristic specular that's emitting from his sur the surface of his uh, of his suit and it'll it'll really um, add a lot of interesting things to look at and of course all the little flashy bits will be turning off and on we talked about uh, sort of a staggering effect maybe for this uh, where each uh, systematically shuts down so um, not all of them all of the of the glowing things turn off um, at the same time, but maybe they uh, shut down systematically, like it's uh, run by a computer and it's doing a, a systems check or something, and, and each one is being treated individually. And even something like that could be developed in, in, in Shake. 
um, with just an image like this, it could be animated, um, just on the still, and uh, it could that'd be a great way to go through the approval process of how it actually looks. Um, to get their true effect, though, um, you would need to almost uh, animate the uh, some uh, lights around them, but it wouldn't be that uh, crucial to really sell the glow. You just need a few lights, and the rest could be uh, independent of lights. So I'm, I'm still playing with this this color. I've added some sharpness to it, trying to bring out some more detail. I think it's a little um, blurry, but um, the issue too is too much detail will 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 start to get away from the synthetic look that um, we we're shooting for in some of the pieces. So um, it's kind of got to be a compromise in between. So I'm doing another key mix here. Um, I'm going to use the uh, this mat that I made. Uh, this is actually a painted mat, not an object mat. And this tells me where the cloth is um, inside the pants. So it's one texture mat. And I can isolate the red channel uh, here, like I've uh, isolated some of the other ones. And um, plug that straight into the color correction so that uh, I'm not getting all of those gammas and things into the cloth because I feel I have a feeling that um, the gammas and stuff on the cloth, as you can see there, which is inverted, um, is just way too strong. So um, it's good on the leather because I'm getting all kinds of neat contrast, but um, on the pants it's just not working. So here it's too drastic. So what we'll do is we'll fade that to like. We'll in invert this. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to, instead of doing that, I'm just going to do a brightness. If you do a brightness on your um, on your alpha, and then choose the, the, the matte uh, channel to be um, RG or B, your brightness will control the intensity of the alpha, um, of that matte. And, uh, you can just dial it in with a with a slider, which is a really easy way of doing it. So here's the tree. This is pretty simple. I try to keep it organized uh, so it's not too uh, it's not too ugly. But um, and this is pretty much what we're looking at. I'm gonna do a slight little glow just to just to top it off. Do a little uh, light bloom on that rim light. And it'll be the last thing we do. Um, and this is purely just for fun. It's not really have anything to do with the asset. But um, you can kind of do these little things uh, to sell your image and to um, have people uh, excited about your, your asset, which is always good. So that wraps it up for Geo. Um, he is textured, and I rendered out a model sheet here, you can see, um, just to kind of show the asset for review compared to the concept art. Um, the next stage in the production would be lighting and uh, get a little more in-depth information on the shaders that I overviewed and uh, how to get them all rendered up.